the industrially important separation of alkene alkane mixtures is currently carried out in distillation columns. Let's consider, for example, the separation of ethene from ethane. The boiling points are relatively close to each other and the relative volatility alpha is about 1.2. For separation of uh, propene from propane, we see that the boiling point differences are about 5 degree Kelvin and the relative volatility is only 1.14. Currently, industry requires ethene feedstocks to the, the polymerization reactor to be of 99.5% plus purity. And similarly, the propene fed to a polymerization reactor should also have a high purity of uh, the unsaturated uh, alkene. This is a picture of a distillation column. Typically, the uh, distillation column for uh, separation of propene from propane, this is called in industry as the C3 splitter. Such distillation columns are amongst the largest distillation towers on this planet. They operate at a reflux ratios of about 15, contain about 100 plus distillation trays, and in view of the large capacity of such units, the, the uh, Column diameters can range up to 20 meters and the column heights are about 75 meters. Just to put this in perspective, this is a picture of a human being and you should consider the height of this human being in relation to the diameter of the distillation column. In view of the fact that these distillation columns operate at cryogenic temperatures, at high reflux ratios, and high pressures, they are energy intensive because of the uh, costs associated with uh, vaporization and cooling in the reboiler and condenser operations. So in MOF developments, this separation has been the target for, MOF, uh, for the development of a suitable MOF as a replacement for the current distillation technology. The separation of mixtures of uh, Propylene and propane is of industrial importance because uh, of the uh, need for uh, producing feedstocks to the uh, polymerization reactor. The uh, purity requirements for uh, polymer grade feedstocks is uh, that the uh, propylene content be uh, purer than 99.95%. And um, currently, such purities are achievable in uh, distillation separations. Due to the uh, small differences in the boiling points of uh, propylene and propane, um, cryogenic distillations are necessary, and um, such distillation columns are operated at high pressures and high reflux ratios because the uh, relative volatility is uh, close to unity. It's uh, 
we ask ourselves the question whether metal organic frameworks can uh, provide uh, energy efficient alternatives to uh, propylene propylene separations in uh, PSA units. Many moths selectively absorb the unsaturated uh, propylene by exploiting the pi bond interactions with open metal sites of um, MMOF 74, where M is uh, magnesium, iron, cobalt, nickel, or manganese. Alternatively, um, we may um, selectively absorb the uh, unsaturated alkene by interactions with uh, extra framework cations of zeolites such as uh, 13X or LTA5A. A completely different strategy for separating um, propylene propane mixtures is to exploit uh, the uh, subtle differences in the bond lengths, bond angles, and uh, molecular shapes and sizes of propylene and propane by uh, using uh, ultra microporous uh, cobalt gallate as described in this paper in JAX 2020. Another alternative is to use uh, KAUS-7 that has a uh, subtle trapto mechanism that excludes the saturated propane from the pores of KAUS-7. We uh, examine separations with uh, these two different strategies and examine which of these two strategies is uh, capable of uh, yielding um, polymer grade feedstocks suitable for polymerization reactors. In this graph, we compare the um, breakthroughs for 50-50 mixtures of uh, propylene and propane in the absorption phase of a um, fixed bed adsorber. Uh, the graph uh, plots the dimensionless concentrations at the exit as a function of a uh, modified time parameter, where T is the time in seconds, Q0 is the volumetric flow rate of the uh, gas mixture at the inlet in units of liters per second and this uh, quantity is divided by the mass of the adsorbent in the bed. We note that there are important differences between uh, the breakthrough characteristics of iron MOF 74 denoted here in red and uh, the other two MOFs, CAUS 7 and cobalt gallate that uh, rely on um, exclusion of the uh, saturated alkane from the uh, pores by um, exploiting subtle differences in molecular shapes and sizes. For MOP, for iron MOP 74, the uh, uptake capacities are significantly higher than the, those obtained with these two MOPs. However, we note also that uh, there is a significant uptake of uh, propane along with that of uh, propylene. So uh, this significant uptake of propane within the pores has important consequences on the uh, purities of the uh, propylene product in the desorption cycle as we shall see in the uh, subsequent slides. On, in contrast, these two MOFs uh, virtually exclude propane from the pores and uh, the breakthrough of propane occurs practically at the start of the, the uh, absorption, nearly start of the absorption run. But uh, the amount of uh, propylene that is uh, uh, absorbed is significantly lower by about a factor 
of 5, then uh, the uptake capacity of uh, M of uh, 74. So let us examine the uh, important differences between um, the uh, productivity and the purities obtained with these two different classes of uh, absorbents. I now compare the uh, absorption and desorption cycles for two different MOFs, Cobalt MOF 74 and uh, Kaust 7. These two MOFs have um, two different strategies for um, propane propylene separations. Let's uh, look at the uh, simulations of the uh, absorption cycle. The uh, breakthroughs with uh, Cobalt MOF 74 are indicated by these uh, black lines, and the uh, breakthroughs with Kaust 7 are indicated by the blue lines. Um, for Cobalt MOF 74, the significant uptake of both propylene and propane, whereas with Kaust 7, Propane is practically excluded from the pores. However, the uptakes of both components are significantly lower than the uptakes with cobalt MOF 74. At the times indicated here, we have um, um, the termination of the adsorption phase and uh, the desorption cycle is uh, simplified in the following manner, it consists of uh, a counter current vacuum blowdown. Deep vacuum is applied and the pressure at the exit is assumed to be two kilopascals. The uh, simulations of the uh, counter current uh, vacuum blowdown operations are shown here. Black lines refer to cobalt uh, MOF 74 and the uh, blue lines correspond to cost 7. Let's look at the um, cumulative moles um, leaving the uh, vacuum blowdown operations with the two MOFs. For we note that uh, with cobalt MOF 74, a significantly higher uh, amount of uh, propylene is recovered, about uh, five to six uh, moles per kilogram of adsorbent, but concomitantly, we have um, a significantly high amount of propane also being recovered in the blowdown phase because of the uh, significant amounts of propane that remains in the adsorbed phase at the start of the blowdown operations. In sharp contrast, with Kaust 7, the uh, the amount of um, propylene that is recovered is significantly lower, but so is the amount of propane that is recovered, and the propane that is recovered is about an order of magnitude lower than the uh, propane that is recovered with uh, cobalt MOF 74. These differences in the uh, uh, amounts of uh, propane that uh, ends up in the uh, um, product here is reflected in the purities with cost 7 a purity of 98.7 is achievable in the simple PSA scheme of uh, absorption and desorption whereas with um, cobalt mop 74 the maximum purity that is achievable is only 92.5 so with a simplified PSA scheme neither of these two mops is capable of producing polymer grade um, propylene, but um, with uh, cobalt MOF 74, the uh, maximum achievable purity is significantly lower than the purity achievable with cost uh, 7. The message to emerge is that to achieve high purity, the uh, uptake of propane in the absorption cycle should be uh, close to zero. We need to have total exclusion, otherwise um, the purity requirements are difficult, nay impossible to achieve. Um, one remedy is to have a, a more um, complex PSA scheme 
as we shall see in the uh, subsequent slide. In order to um, increase the purity of the recovered propylene, we need to um, employ a um, five-step separation, PSA separation scheme shown in this uh, slide. This uh, scheme consists of um, pressurization, absorption at high pressure, followed by co-current high pressure purge, and the purge with, is with uh, the uh, product propylene. This is followed by co-current blowdown operations, followed by counter-current vacuum blowdown. Any propane that remains in the void volume will contribute to loss of purity of the uh, desired propylene product. And in order to um, mitigate that, we uh, introduce the co-current high pressure purge in the step here. For production of ethane feedstocks of 99.95% purity required for polymerization reactors, Cryogenic distillation columns operated at high pressures and high reflux ratios are commonly employed for large-scale separations of mixtures of ethene and ethane. Many MOF developments have targeted ethene-ethane separations with the objective of eventually supplanting the energy-intensive distillation technologies. Most of the MOFs that have been developed selectively absorb the unsaturated alkene by exploiting the pi bond interactions with extra framework cations in zeolites such as NAX or LTA 5A or interactions with open metal sites of um, MOF 74, copper BTC, etc. In um, a different kind of an approach, using UTSA280, the uh, saturated ethane is practically extruded from the pores due to subtle geometrical differences between um, ethane and ethane. A completely different path to uh, ethane-ethane separations is to use uh, MOFs that are selective to the saturated alkane. In this presentation, I ask the question whether I should proceed my development activities along these lines in which uh, I uh, have preferentially preferential uptake of the uh, unsaturated alkene or should I continue my developments in searching for MOFs that are selective to the saturated alkane, keeping in mind that my objective is to produce polymer grade feedstocks of 99.95% purity plus. This presentation is a follow up to my previous presentation on uh, C2H4, C2H6 separations with MOFs that is uh, uploaded on my YouTube channel. I um, begin the discussions with examining two MOFs that uh, selectively uh, take up the unsaturated ethene. Let's compare the uh, separations of 50-50 mixtures of ethene and ethane using uh, two different MOFs, iron MOF 74 and uh, UTSA 280. The uh, breakthroughs for 50-50 uh, mixtures are shown here. The y-axis represents the dimensionless concentrations at the exit. 
and the x-axis is a modified time parameter in which we plot uh, the time multiplied by the uh, volumetric flow rate at the inlet in liters per second, typically at uh, STP conditions, divided by the mass of adsorbent in the bed expressed in kilograms. The two different uh, breakthroughs are shown here. Red symbols indicate the breakthroughs with iron MOP 74, and the green symbols are the uh, breakthroughs obtained with UTSA 280. There are important differences in the two uh, breakthroughs. The most important one is to note that um, with the size exclusion of 280, in which uh, the ethane is practically excluded from the pores, the uh, breakthrough of um, ethane occurs practically near the start of the uh, breakthrough run. On the other hand, with uh, iron MOF 74, the uptakes of both components are significantly high and the breakthrough of um, the saturated ethane occurs at a much later time than with UTSA 280. These have uh, important consequences for um, a PSA scheme used in practice to produce ethene of um, the required purity, typically 99.95% plus. Let us uh, compare the uh, separations of 50-50 uh, C2H4, C2H6 mixtures using um, two different uh, MOFs. Iron MOF 74 and UTSA 280 using a simplified PSA scheme in which we have an adsorption phase followed by countercurrent vacuum blowdown. The uh, breakthroughs shown here are simulations using uh, experimental data on the unary isotherms and uh, diffusivities that uh, are chosen to match the uh, breakthrough experiments shown in the previous slide. With uh, iron mob 74, both components have uh, finite uptakes within the uh, 11 angstrom hexagonal channels, whereas uh, with UTSA 28, the uh, saturated alkane is practically excluded from the pores and um, gets rejected into the gas phase immediately after the feed stock is injected. The absorption cycle is terminated at the uh, times shown by the arrows here before the uh, unsaturated alkene starts to emerge from the exit. So the, the uh, absorption cycle is terminated at these times. If we examine the component loadings of ethane, shown by the dashed lines, and ethane, shown by the continuous lines, in the two MOFs at uh, the end of the absorption cycle, we note that uh, with uh, UTSA 280, practically no C2H6 is uh, remaining within the pores after the end of the absorption cycle. However, with uh, iron MOF 74, a finite loading 
mounting to 0.5 moles per kilogram of uh, the saturated alkane remains within the pores at the end of the adsorption cycle. Let's uh, look at the uh, countercurrent vacuum blowdown operations. Here I apply deep vacuum corresponding to two pascals in the exit and uh, the uh, cumulative moles of uh, ethene shown by the continuous lines and ethane shown by the dashed lines are um, during the blowdown operation are plotted here for the two MOFs. There are important differences in the uh, C2H4 and C2H6 recoveries in the blowdown phase with uh, UTSA 280, the, uh, there is only a very small amount of uh, C2H6 that is uh, desorbed along with the desired C2H4. However, with the iron MOF 74, the uh, C2H6 that remains within the uh, pore space at the end of the adsorption cycle is also desorbed concomitantly with the C2H4. And uh, this co-desorption of C2H6 along with C2H4 has severe consequences on the purity of the uh, product that is recovered in the vacuum blowdown operations. The uh, percentage of C2H4 is plotted for UTSA 280 and for iron MOF 74 by these two lines. We note that with UTSA 280, the maximum uh, purity in C2H4 is 98.5%, whereas with iron MOF uh, 74, the maximum purity that is possible in the simplified two-step Absorption desorption scheme is only 88%. So, the uh, summary of the differences between these morphs is obvious. With iron MOF 74, we have a higher productivity of C2H4, but the purity of the recovered product is only 88%. With uh, UTSA 280, the productivity of C2H4 is significantly lower, but the purity is significantly higher. A more complex five-step PSA scheme is required in order to increase the purities beyond the levels indicated here. But from uh, my own calculations, it appears that the achievement of 99.95% purity is near impossible with either of these two MOFs. Therefore, let us uh, see whether this situation can be uh, remedied by choosing a C2H6 selective morph.